Hi, Vail Fucci here. I'm going to walk you through how to create an event and how to make overlays for that event so that they look fantastic. All right, I'd go to spotmyphotos.com, hit login. If I need to, I'd put in username and password, but it's remembered me. And I'm gonna create an event. I'm on my dashboard here, so I click on new event. In this case, it's my one is climb for a cause with project place 2024. It's a standard event because it's just a, a thing that's going on. It's not a headshot event. If I hadn't shot with this client before, I'd want to go in and click on new client and fill out the information there. But I have indeed shot with them before and I want it to remember people that have been spotted before. So I'm going to click on project place because that's the client. The start date is the 21st for the actual event. I'm clicking with standard labeling because I'm okay with it saying my name and spot my photos at the bottom of the gallery there. If I wanted it to just have my name and just be white label and if we wanted it so as if I was shooting for somebody else entirely and wanted nothing of that, it would be private label. All right, I want live photos for my distribution because I want my attendees to get the wow factor of instant image is there. And I'm going to click on perfectly clear because I like to have it do the auto optimization there to make it so that uh, on the off chance my exposure wasn't just right in camera, it's going to help make it look just perfect. All right, that should be everything. I'm going to hit create event. Okay, great. I'm going to create event now. Perfect. My event is made. I literally could start shooting right now, but I want to go and make it look really nice. So how do we do that? Well, we do it with photo branding, gallery branding, and the like. So here's what we do. When it comes to the photo branding and the gallery branding, sometimes what I'll do is I'll write to the client in advance and get the different imagery and the different logos that they have and stuff. But sometimes they don't have that uh, to me. So instead, what I'll do is I'll go to the actual event or even just the organization and that, and I'll get a sense of their color scheme. So for example, when I'm looking here, I can see it's a red, white, and blue color scheme here. You can see some of the logos that are placed here. That's one way you can go and get it. So you go look about the different bits of it, what are the different imagery that they have that's going along with it so that I can get inspiration for it, use some of it, see if, for example, in this case, with it being a charity one of links that are for donations, etc. Okay, so in this case, I happen to like this bit that they have right here for the top of it that they already have of branding going on nicely like this. It has the date and everything, looks great. So I'm actually going to take a screen capture and use this. So to do that on a Mac, I'm going to hit Shift, Command, and 4 to be able to get a specific selection. If I want the entire screen to be Shift, Option, uh, Shift, Command, 3, but I'm going to do Shift, Command, 4, which gives me this ability to draw out exactly what I want here. Pull this imaging here of what they've got. Great. So now I'm going to pull that image into Photoshop. Perfect. So now we've got that there. And I'm happy with that. Okay, so let's go back to Spot My Photos and we're going to go for our gallery branding. Now you'll notice here that we now have both mobile and for desktop. That is great because now you can have it more tailored specifically to the viewing of it on that you get on a phone and having it be a, a quick upload of a, a smaller file size versus being able to have it be that larger one and higher quality and resolution for going on a computer screen. So I'm going to look at that and take that into consideration and I'm going to make two different versions. So we have our 800 by 500 and 2500 by 500. So let's go in and look at that. All right, so I'm going to start with the desktop one because it's a, a larger size there. Now, uh, right now, if we look and see the size of this, we can see it's about, it's definitely bigger than the 2500 and it's bigger than the 500. So I can use the thing in Photoshop of the image to resize this. So let me go image, image size. Okay, I can use this nicely if I'm trying to make it smaller or if I'm trying to make it just a little bit bigger. If it needs to be made a lot bigger, like they gave you a really low resolution uh, piece for it there, I would not recommend doing it this way in here because it will just kind of get pixely and, and kind of blurry and that's not what you want. But in this case, we're gonna go and we want it to 2500 of that width. I'm going to hit okay. Great, then go file, 
and export as and I'll still pick a nice high-res JPEG and export and I'll go to my downloads and I'll just call it climb for cause desktop okay now I'm going to go in and do my image size again here for it and go image size and get to that 500 for mobile. For mobile, I really want to make sure it's that smaller bit there. And it automatically already resizes the width down a bit, but we're going to kind of cut the edges of this a bit afterwards and I'll show you how. And go that, okay. Now, if everything was centered exactly the way you wanted, at first you might think, oh, well, I'm just going to move these in and out, but then be hard to get it just centered just right. So if I am happy with it, everything is already centered, I'm going to go to just image, canvas size, and then I'm just going to go and put it to that 800 that we wanted for the width. It's going to say, okay, it's going to give me a message that clipping is going to proceed. That's fine. And there we go. Now I have it that it's made it down to that exact little spot the way that we want it. And then I'll go export as, and again, JPEG, I bring up my quality there, and export. In this case, I'm going to do climb for cause mobile. Okay, now I've got those different elements there without me ever going and actually saving over and getting rid of that original image that I had. So now that I have that, I can go over here to my cover image part and I can go downloads and drop that into mobile and click and drag. You can also just click it and go and find where it was on there. I just am a click and drag type person, but this is the other way. We can go these back into downloads, great. And then go to desktop with that. So you can see the two different versions. And then, like I said before, because this is a charity thing, I went in and I found out what is the donate page for this. And I'm going to take that URL and go over here and then for that cover image, drop that in here. So that that way, if and the event, if they want to be able to do additional donations, they can do that easily. Okay, and then footer image, I'm just going to go for my own footer that I'm using here. You can notice for the footer, it doesn't matter the size, it gives you the difference of the different versions my different bits there. Okay. And then I choose in my case to put in to my own website because that way, if otherwise at the end, people want to go through and say, Oh, I loved your stuff. Uh, can I get your information? I say, here's a link right here. You can click right on it. And then after that, I can preview how things are looking. I can test this right now. I'll send it to my email. Great. And I send the test. I may want to choose it to put in if you have any questions. Uh, if you have any questions about your images or how to download them, please email. Please email us at, and then I'll put in my actual email address, but then I'll make it a link so it automatically can do it for people. Going to that and I'll do mail to just like that. It automatically does it. I hit OK. Great. I'm going to save. I'll send it to my phone number so I can see this and get a test on my phone of a text. So I get this. It sends to me a test and then I can view the test gallery there. Same thing they do. Yes, my photos. And now I can see exactly how it's going to show up on uh, the desktop there, of uh, you can see how that all goes with it there. Now, right now we haven't gotten the parts on the bottom, the overlays on the actual photos yet. So let's go in and do that. So under branding, now we're going to make our overlays and we need ones for both horizontal and for vertical. So how do we do that? Well, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into Photoshop or go file and new. And with this, we're going to start with the 1800 pixels by 1200 pixels. Okay. And now it, I want my background to be transparent with it there. That's very important. And I'm going to hit create. So we have our lengthwise one there. Now in their case, I could have gone back to their actual site of the climb for a cause 
get the different things that they have there if I wanted that, say, for example, going along the bottom. And let's just do that for now. Uh, let's try that of doing like a banner one. So I'm going to use what I've got here. And I'm going to do again that Shift Command 4. And I'm going to copy what's here. Because that looks like nice coloration with it there. Okay. And then I'm just going to drag that into Photoshop. Now, I know that I need to have this be that it's going to work for our 1800 by 1200 there. So let's see how that looks over here. I'm going to go to here, hit Command A to copy it all, uh, select it all, Command C to copy it, and then I come back over here and I hit Paste. Okay, that's Command V for those who like their hotkey commands. So when I do this, you'll see it's too big for this now. So I'm just going to drag this down. Now personally, looking at this, while it looks nice, I think this would cover up too much of my image. I want it to be a bit smaller here. I want it th a thinner band at the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to do something along those lines. But now you might say, well, I've got all this space over here. I'll show you how we're going to fix that. Okay, and Climb for Cause is there, but I also, it's important that I get Project Place in there, their logo for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a thing where I have Project Place here. Okay, there's their logo. And if I don't see it on their main thing there, what I sometimes, and it's not like easily clickable, I just do a Google search for it. And in this case, I'll put Project Place Logo and type it in and see what's going to come up there of the different things. I might go do an image search for it. I look and see what are the different things that are available to me. Okay, here's that nice horizontal one that they were using on the page there, but now I've got it. So I can go, click on that, save that image, and save that into downloads again. Okay, and now that I've got that, okay, and I pull that in. There we go. All right, so now I have that. But now you'll notice that's going to be the same blue, which wouldn't really work for us here. So I'm going to do a tricky little thing of making it into being white for myself. I'm going to make a transparent layer otherwise there. Go to that layer. I'm going to go and do adjustments. And then we're going to do threshold. Okay, so right now it's all black. If I go to the left, of all right, whew, magic, it's all white. Okay, now I've got that so it's all white. And I'm going to go and bring that, click and drag over here. And now you can see, woo, I've got my Project Place logo and I've got this. So that's the start, but we got to have it all fit and look nice, right? So with this here, I'd probably say climb for a cause. We'll go over a bit more here, maybe just a little smaller. Okay, and then I'll go and I'll drag from the top here, click and drag down, and it'll automatically snap to making a guide for me. With that, then in that same layer that's on there, I'll go across and select up to that area, boom, like that. Then I'm going to grab my paint. I'm going to hit Option for the little, it makes the little dropper. It'll find that exact color. And then I click and have it fill in. And then that looks pretty nice with it there. Okay. So now I have that. Command D to get off of it. I go to my other layer of where I had the project place thing. And I'll put that into a spot where it looks nice. If I want to even visually see, say I want to line it up with the bottom of that, I can bring in another guide and just look about where's the bottom. Perfect. And now I can see that I need to bring that down just that little bit so that it would all be in line. Okay, so that's for the landscape. So now I'm going to export and what's going to be important is this needs to be as an, a PNG. So it's going to keep our transparency. We need that because that's where the picture is going to go. So I hit export. 
and I'm always going to put the name of it, so climb for a cause, but then I'm going to actually name it landscape so that I remember which is which it goes into. And I'll hit save. Okay. So now you might be thinking, okay, great, I have to make a whole nother one of these for the vertical and I have to adjust everything. Not so. What you can easily do is we go up to canvas size. Make sure you press the bottom little button here so it makes it so that everything is anchored from here. And with some lovely algebra, we can figure that so that's the same ratios that if we make the part that is being 1800 still stays at the bottom, but the top, the height 2700, so I'm going to go height 2700. In this case, it's going to go add the space up there. I'm going to hit OK. Now it's going to be the exact same ratio, but so that when it exports with it here, I go export as, then I'm going to do instead go back to it of my 1200 width, 1800 height, it's going to make it smaller for me by default. Export. I'm going to do climb for a cause, portrait, and hit save. Great. Now I just go over here, click on the horizontal landscape one, landscape, ta-da, click on portrait, ta-da, all set and looking fantastic. Now that's all saved, I'll do save, I could do preview again in this case, I'm going to skip it because I, I know it's going to look great there. And then I can double check all my advanced settings are looking great here. We can choose whether or not to have people be able to download the original downloads without the logo. In this case, I do want it that way. We can choose if we want them to be able to view all the photos that are in the event as well, which I don't want them to do. I just want them seeing their own with it there. I don't want them to be able to add their own event photos. That's a whole nother thing to do. Uh, it's not what I'm looking to do in this one and I'm not having people be able to purchase them. This is a charity thing, they're just getting it. So that's exactly what I want. So everything is now set. I'll save and preview those changes and we will skip that. I can just go to my old email that I had before and it should go and show us the updated viewed one. I hit yes. And there you go. You can see how it looks with the overlays looking pretty fabulous. And that's it. That's all I had to do to set it up.